as soon as this episode is done, say, who do I need to become? What thoughts do I need to think in order to have a business that is great, in order to have a business that's bringing in that much monthly? Who do I need to be to the world? Hello, mommy millionaires. Welcome to the podcast for ambitious moms, both present and future, seeking future wealth and generational wealth. That's what we're about. So as entrepreneurs, there is one common goal that we're all striving for. You could probably guess what that is. It's consistent cash flow. We want to know what we're going to be making month over month over month. And so we try to strategize, right? We try to go and look at the entire year and project, hey, you know, okay, we know people buy less in December. When it comes to coaching services, when it comes to MLM products, December is going to be your slower month. So just plan accordingly, right? We also know that's going to happen in the summertime. People have historically bought less of those things in the summertime because people are in vacation mode. And so when you look at the buying and spending habits of people, you can really go and say, okay, I'm going to plan my entire year around this. You know, for Mommy Millionaire, we have our biggest months in January normally and our biggest months in September. And what's so crazy is last December, okay, so just a few months ago, if you're listening to this right now, December was our biggest month of the year. And it totally blew our minds. It it exceeded our expectations because we were really, you know, we're like, if we are in the green this month, it'll be a win. That is how we went into the month. And it really got me thinking. I'm like, you know what? I wonder if that has like something to do with how well it went for us, right? We were really unattached to it because we didn't expect much. We just said, you know what? Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. We're going to do our part. We're going to we're going to show up on social media. I mean, I took two weeks off in December and we, it was still our best month of the year. That's what's so crazy. I wanted to share that with you because, you know, I want to share with you why I was okay with December not being big. Well, it was because we had... A really fantastic year because Mommy Millionaire created a budget and we stuck to it. And, you know, in a company, okay, so this is not in your personal life, this is in your company. It's extremely important to stick to a budget. You got to stick to a budget in your business. So you go, okay, I want to allocate a certain percentage to marketing. I want to allocate a certain percentage to uh, generosity. I want to allocate a certain percentage to improvements of the product, whatever it is. Plan a budget, budget for events, okay? The budget will help you understand where your money's going and it helps you identify areas where you might need to cut back. Something that I was spending way too much money on was our events because you know, I like details. I like to go over the top. And it's like, you know what? It's really not that necessary, okay? Because people don't remember any of that stuff. That's It's kind of like when you go to a wedding, right? You don't remember any of the nice stuff. You remember the experience. You want to know, was the food good? And was the dancing good? <laughs> it's same with coaching events, okay? People want to go, was the information I was taught good? Was the energy in the room lit, right? Were people excited? Were there awesome people in the room? Did I leave better than I came? That's what people want when it comes to events. They don't need all the shiny stuff, you know? And so we, when we set our budget, we go, okay, this is, this is it. This is what we're doing for events. And we still got great reviews of people coming to mommy millionaire events, right? What I noticed was that sometimes when we tend to overdo it in certain areas, it's because we're coming from a very like lack place. I don't feel worthy, so I need to overcompensate. I'm not good enough, so I need to overcompensate for things. And, you know, most of the time, 
you have good information, you're a great educator, you have a great product, you don't need to overcompensate, you need to stand in your power. So a budget helps you reduce unnecessary expenses, okay? One of the best ways to create consistent cash flow is to know what your expenses are, okay? So for me, I have some fixed expenses, okay? I have a couple people on salary on Mommy Millionaire. I can kind of budget for the commissions that will be paid out because I know, okay, I'm expecting this much to be sold, so I'm gonna expect to pay this much in commissions. So that will fluctuate because some months, again, we sell more. (laughs) Uh, But if we sell more, then it, it makes up, right, for the higher commissions being paid out because they only make more if we sell more. So it works out really well. You need to evaluate areas where you are spending more than you need to see how you can, you know, really cut back on that. And one of the things I had to do, right, when I looked at this year is I go, okay, I have too many employees. I don't necessarily need a personal assistant that's by my side 40 hours a week. And that's what I was paying for. And I'm going, like, I really don't need it. My life, you know, a lot of people think, Kayla, your life's so busy. I have a lot of stuff going on with the kids, but I don't have a nanny. I don't want a nanny. I want my life to be full with my kids. That's very important to me. I love being at every practice, every game, picking them up from school. That's so important to me. And so, you know, I've built my life around that where I am, you know, when it comes to 2.30, I am off. <laughs> I'm going to be with the kids till eight o'clock doing mom stuff. And I, I love that. Am I tired? Yeah, I'm tired in this season, but it's okay. Right. But I looked and go, I don't really need a personal assistant. So I had to let my personal assistant go. And it wasn't like, oh, we're financially hurting or anything like that. No, it's just like, I'm not going to spend money to just spend money. Right. Be- uh, because there wasn't, it wasn't growing. Right. And I, and I've actually seen me not having a personal assistant has actually made me more productive. I'm actually making more money from that move. So, you know, you got to be smart with the stewardship you're given. And you could say, well, Kayla, like, well, you were employing somebody. You just let them go. Listen, if somebody is not like in their role, living it out to the best of their ability, like absolutely killing it, knowing that they're needed and they're valued, they're not happy. So I actually did her a favor. Because now she's out there killing it, doing what she feels valued at, right? She found another spot, another role, and that was actually a gift. So you've got to change your perspective around that if if that's something maybe that you're going through as a business owner. And another way we create consistent cash flow is, okay, where can we sell more? Do we have another product to put out there into the world? Is there a way to increase the lifetime value of a customer? Do we have an Ascension model? These are things that we talk about inside of the Mommy Millionaire Mastermind all the time. So make sure to check it out at mommymillionaire.co if you want. So make sure that you're really maximizing, right? All of the products. And if they're, if you find like, oh, I keep referring a, you know, this program or this book to somebody, do you have an affiliate link set up for all of the things that you refer. Make sure that there is a plan in place for all of your referrals. You know, make sure there's an email marketing plan, a social media marketing plan for your affiliates, because it might not be you creating another product. It's just selling more of somebody else's product. And that's going to increase your cash flow. That's zero expenses right there. Zero expenses and just increasing that cash flow. Another thing you need to do, because some months are better than others, is you want to have an emergency fund for your business. So everybody's salaries, including yours, you want to have at least six months in reserves in an account somewhere. People will say, well, what kind of account? Okay, I can't give advice like that. I'll tell you what I do. I actually have mine in an infinite banking account because it's over in the infinite banking account. It's growing, growing, growing month after month after month. It's liquid, so I could pull it out at any time. If I don't have the money to pay salaries, I could pull it out of that infinite banking account, no charge, right? There's no fee attached to it, but it's also growing eight to 12% month after month after month. So I really like that. And so people go, oh, I need to have it in my bank account. No, you don't need to have it in a bank account because it's losing money in a normal bank account. Always find a way to be the bank. Always find a way to have your money, you know, being uh, on borrow, So it can grow for you when you don't really need it at that time. 
Another thing that I love to do inside of my business, and I just had Rachel Cruz on the show, and she said, you know, she hates credit cards. I love a good credit card. I use my Amex Platinum for everything inside of my business. Is it worth, people say, is it worth the the yearly fee? Yeah, for me it is. We basically fly free because I pay for everything inside of my business with my Amex. And my kid travels every single week out of state with my husband, you know, so it's paying for free flights. So I love getting those types of points. It's really been beneficial for us. I also like using credit cards uh, because guess what? When you use a credit card and the contractor or the agency that you hire to do a job doesn't do it and you paid them ahead of time, you can dispute that charge. And your credit cards are really great about that compared to banks. They won't, they won't fight for you. Credit cards will. They will take your word if somebody doesn't, you know, do something right. So I love that. Another thing you want to do to continue to create that consistent cash flow as an entrepreneur is making sure that when you pay yourself every single month, that you're taking at least 10%. I specifically love 20% off of the top to go straight into an investment account, okay? So that means if Mommy Millionaire brings in $100,000, I'm gonna take 20% of that and put it over into an investment account every month. And I'm going to look for ways to invest that money. You know, for me, I'm gonna do it in hard money lending syndications, which if you're interested in that, you can DM me on Instagram to find out more. I'm gonna put it in that or I'm gonna put it into an asset in real estate, specifically class B multifamily. But it's usually not a money problem. It's I'm looking for the right deals all the time and that takes time for me. I'm constantly looking for better deals to put money in. So make sure to have an investment account. Be committed to having it come off the top. So that way, you know, like, hey, at the end of the day, no matter what happens with my company, I am always going to be getting paid through the assets that I've created off of my profit in my business. And, you know, I had to do this a couple of years ago. I, I downsized my lifestyle because what I saw was, okay, in Mommy Millionaire, we're making this amount, but my expenses were so high in my business because we had an office space. We had several employees that all had these freaking different softwares and, you know, all these apps. And what I was making was like a 20% margin, which is not great in the coaching industry. In the coaching industry, what's so great is that you should have very little overhead. And I was over here with extremely high overhead. And I said, okay, how can I downsize all of this? Got rid of the office space, got rid of the unnecessary contractors I was using, got rid of the extra, extra, extra that I didn't really need for my business to succeed. And also for me, I'm like, okay, do I really need a 8,000 square foot mansion? I asked myself that. Do I really need this house? Does this house make me happy with how much I have to pay, you know, every single month to live in this house? At the end of the day, it was like, no. Like, I would much rather that be going towards an asset that is going to be cash flowing for me. So we downsized from an 8,000 square foot house to a 4,000 square foot house. And I'm probably way happier right now. I would say, actually, yeah. I am way happier right now because I've been able to invest in so many assets since I made that move because I saved myself like 10 grand a month by just changing the house I lived in. That's crazy. You know, and I thought kind of, oh, what are people going to say when I move out of this house? I thought about that for a second. I'm like, you know what? I don't really care. (laughs) I really don't care. Am I going to be happier? Is living in a 4,000 square foot house, you know, that's half the size is it gonna help me live my bigger life? Absolutely, because there's more gap. You always wanna look for that gap in your life. So create a benchmark, right, in your business of, okay, we consistently have to make this. Let's just say it's 10K for you, right? 
10K. This is the non-negotiable of what we have to make month after month after month. And this is like the consistent residual income that's going to be coming in from my business. And then set up a income stream inside of your company, right, that will for sure give you that 10K a month. I just joined a real estate mastermind and, you know, he gave me the options for payment and he just gave me one. He goes, well, it's monthly. It's, you know, $1,500 a month or something like that. And I go, well, what if I pay in full? Because usually if you pay in full, you'll get some type of discount, right? So I go, well, what if I pay in full? How much is it? He goes, no, I don't allow pay in fulls. My company is more valuable when I have, you know, a large residual income every month. And I go, oh, wow. I go, what do you do if people don't pay? He goes, I've never not had anybody pay at that amount of a month. Everybody's cards always go through. And I go, oh, okay. Yeah, you're definitely weeding out the people, you know, at that point. Because I've had a membership before that was $37 a month and it was constant. We had a full-time employee that just recovered payments. It was a nightmare. I mean, I loved that program, but it was so hard for her. Like it was the hardest job for her. It was really hard on our team. So we, we canceled that. Anyway. But this is for you to think about, right? He has 500 people, and I think it was $1,500. So just do the math yourself, right? He has 500 people paying him $1,500 a month. Homeboy knows how much he's going to be making every single month, right? And he gets people that have been in there for years. They just stay, boom, 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 because there's not any big, huge chunk of money that they're putting up front. They're just having it come out of their credit card month after month, getting those points. And he offers major value inside of his program too, which is so awesome. But could you create something like that where you're like, no, there's no painful option. It's a recurring membership month after month after month. So you know, okay, this is how I get to that 10K. So I'm gonna tell you really quick, let's do the math. And I'm not the membership expert, but I just wanna say, if you could help 100 people, right? If you could help 100 people every single month with the gift or talent that you have and they all pay you $100 a month, you're at $10,000 a month right there in recurring revenue. And most membership models are very low overhead because you're usually just using a Facebook group, you're using Zoom, all things that cost very little month after month and you are the talent. So it's mostly a lot of profit coming into you from following a model like that. So I highly recommend looking into something like that. If you're like, Kayla, I don't know the first part about being a part of something like that. You know, check out the Mommy Millionaire Mastermind because, you know, that's what I'm doing inside of the mastermind. You pay monthly to get coaching from me. And there's different tiers of what you get. You could pay for just the coaching. You could pay for the entire mastermind where you have access to Slack, to our Mommy Millionaire coaches, to every course I've ever seen, I've ever created, and live coaching with me. And there's a different price tier for every single one of that. And see what I've done, right? And I'm not saying to copy me because you can't copy greatness. No, I'm joking. You want to be your unique self. You have the gifts and the talents that you can give the world. But there's something out there that you might be able to create inside of a membership that gives massive value and really changes the world. So I want you to think about that right now. Maybe write down some ideas of what you have to create that recurring residual income month after month after month. So I hope you love this episode. We're we're talking all things cash flow. I love talking about business strategy. That's all great. But what's most important is the person you are as the CEO. You've got to be visionary. You've got to be future focused. You've got to be impact minded. At the end of the day, why are we doing all of this? You're not just doing it to have consistent cash flow. You're doing it because you want to change lives. You're doing it because you want to change your own life. And you've got to focus on being the person that gets to have that life. How are you showing up in your greatness today? You know, who are you at your core? Are you living out your core values of excellence every single day? Are you living out that core value of greatness every single day? Be honest with yourself. And if you haven't been living like that, start showing up like that. As soon as this episode is done, say, who do I need to become? What thoughts do I need to think in order to have a business that is great, in order to have a business that's bringing in that much monthly? Who do I need to be to the world? And shine bright. 
Thank you so much for listening to this episode or maybe even watching it live. I appreciate you so much. Share with me your favorite part of the episode in the comment section. 